Hey everybody. Okay, so um, today is Sunday, and I usually do my videos on Saturday. But um, today's uh, video is about um, spell books uh, and the type of book that you should have for a, for an Egyptian spell book. Now, Egyptian uh, spells tend to be really long. If you've ever read anything, um, that if you've ever read any of the uh, coffin texts or text of the dead, they're like really long. They're like Bible scriptures. They take up three, four pages. Um, so this is this is a book that I use, and this book isn't for my um, Egyptian magic, but it's more for my hoodoo studies. The herbal correspondences and the oils and the um, candle magic that's and the saints and the um, correspondences to the saints and the deities of ancient Egypt. And you know, yeah, you might find some Egyptian concepts in here because those are connected back to hoodoo in some way. But um, this is not the Egyptian book. This, this is this is too small. This is the Egyptian book. And it's not even done. I'm honestly slacking and keeping it up because I'm working on three spell books at a time. But um, this is it. And the reason for it being so big is because sometimes these um, utterances, as they're known, to, as they're said, um, because you don't really say them out loud, you utter them. You, you mumble a little bit when you say them. Um, but... You know, it's said under the breath, and you know, it's kind of low, and you don't really move your mouth too much, and it's a little talking. It's it's not really a talking as it's uttering. You're uttering the words. You don't want to, you don't want people to know what you're saying. But, um, yeah, it's not big, and it's really not too full of utterances. Um, there might be a couple of utterances to invoke certain deities or certain aspect of deities, and I might have created my own utterances in here. Um, there might be a few from the coffin texts, the um, sacred texts, which are usually wall texts from temples belonging to deities, and um, the uh, Book of the Dead. And the Book of the Dead, if you've ever read that or if you've ever heard of it, um, people kind of confuse it with like the um, the Mummy, that movie where the Mummy like rises and there's this big book with Anubis on it. And it's in black and gold, the Nubis's colors. That's not what it looks like. It's a scroll made out of paper. It's a scroll, not a book. Um, but it contains spells to get a spirit through the afterlife. And that's what I kind of love about the Egyptian magic, is that there's sort of spells to get you through the afterlife as well as in, the pre in your living life. But, yeah. And it's usually supposed to be... This one is very empty towards the back. I have things on here about spirits and aspects, and I have utterances and callings and stuff, but I think it needs a little bit more work. It hasn't been kept up in a while, and I think I need to go add some stuff to it, and I'm about to, actually. But when you're working with, like, the Egyptian book, Egyptian magic, you want a big book, because what you're going to find is that um, when you're speaking herbal correspondences, and stuff, and people have been asking me about herbal correspondences for ancient Egyptian magic. The thing is that since ancient Egyptian magic isn't as well kept as other types of magic, it's not as like it wasn't as publicly shared. Um, actually, it was publicly shared, but you know, it was very much destroyed when other countries invaded Egypt, um, and people started selling Egyptian texts off to make extra money. It was just more of a hoarding thing. But um, there have been lots of parts of Egyptian magic lost. And so when you think of her herbal correspondences or anything, um, just think of what you would use, uh, what represents uh, something that you would use in that certain correspondences. So um, a lot of the correspondences I use are Wiccan and Hoodoo, f speaking herbally, herbally speaking. Um, um, but... Speaking, when you want to put correspondences, herbal correspondences, um, oil com, com, uh, correspondences, um, oil recipes, incense recipes, um, candle dressings, carvings, words that you say, chants, prayers, you're going to want, well, chants and prayers are going to go in the big book because those are considered utterances. Those are speaking, but 
incense, ingredients, stuff like that go in here. Symbols that you draw go in both of these books. Symbols that would be drawn like hieroglyphics or um, pictures that just mean something to you that you use during spells. Those will go in, in both of these books. Um, uh, how a ritual is to be carried out would go in here because it is a part of the utterance. Um, but it has to be separated from the utterance in some way. So you should have a way of marking where the utterance begins, where the um, directions for how everything should be set up begins and where that ends. And then you should have a marking for where the utterance begins and the marking begins. And um, I usually refer to spells as spells, but utterances are spells. They're verbal spells. And I, I think I've covered this before, but on the front of my book, you see I have the God Thoth. And the god Thoth is the god of wisdom and knowledge. And the ancient Egyptians believed that he was also a god of magic because the ancient Egyptians believed that um, Thoth gave them their language. And so all and most of the spells they did were either picture magic or, uh, which is sympathetic magic, uh, sympathetic picture magic, or um, verbal magic, which was actually speaking their wishes and what they their utterances. They would say their utterances, their spells. And so, he was thought to be a god of magic because he gave them their language, which means that he gave them by, by you know, you need words to speak, their utterances. So, um, I, lost, I lost the point of this, but what I'm trying to say is that Thoth gave me, Thoth gave utterances, and so he's a god of magic. I don't even remember where I was going with this, but, um... When you're doing when you're doing spells and you're doing something like this, Thoth is usually a good person to have on your book. And I think I've told you guys about the book of Thoth, which is a book, a spell book that he wrote, that he created, and it has not only spells but information about things that will happen through all time, past, present, and future. Um, but Thoth is also a guy that you put on books to keep them safe because. And you wrap them in great spells, which usually means that you write spells on the inside to protect them. So you would write, so you would create your own utterance, and you would write that on the front and the back of the book. And I've done that in both of these. Well, I haven't done it on this one yet, but I'm getting to it. Um, another thing about this is that ancestors do play a big part in protecting your book. Um, this is not this is not a hoodoo belief, but this is more of an ancient Egyptian belief. That you ask your ancestors to guide this book, I mean, to guide the book, to uh, protect this book and guide you uh, whenever you're using it to, to let you know what should and shouldn't be used. Um, and, you know, it's you're not really supposed to show what's on the inside of your book. I didn't really show too much, but I have a lot of empty pages in here. And I want to fill it up completely, and I want to add paper to it to the point where, you know, I can, I can barely turn the pages, but... At the rate I'm going, keeping three spell books, I have the third one somewhere. I don't even know if I'm going to be able to um, keep two, let alone. I mean, I don't even. I don't even know if I'm going to be able to keep one, let alone three. Um, but this book is my main book. I don't use it unless there's something really important. And whenever I get a really good spell, um, I sort of I write it in. I write it in this one speaking hoodoo wise, but if it's ancient Egyptian based, you know, it uses the Zeb Tepi, and the Zeb Tepi is another concept I will discuss. Um, the Zeb Tepi, um, it will go in here. But what's in this book really is um, things that I connect from hoodoo back to ancient Egyptian magic, like the um, process of breathing life into something. There's actually a creator deity, and there are three creator deities, um, but one of them that I know, named Ptah, he made figures out of uh, clay, like making dolls, making hoodoo dolls. He made figures out of clay, and then he breathed life into them. Another to-do connection. So, what I'm really doing when I'm making these dolls is I'm assuming the form of Ptah. And when you assume God form, it's usually good to have something to connect them to, like a Zep Tepi. Like, um, and Zep Tepi means first time. And it's a myth in ancient Egyptian world. Um, and it's usually good to have something like that to connect the deity to. Because in sense, that means that you're connecting to the deity on a higher level. On a 
more spiritual level on a way of understanding what the deity was doing. And so, um, when I do connect with deities like that, you know, the experiences get written in here. The, the way I connected myself get to them gets written in here because it's the Egyptian spell book. Thoth on it. Thoth is my god. I was born under his astrological symbol. So, he's my god. And, um, you have to think about like you have to think which you have to think which spell book you want to put this in if you're going to do Egyptian magic and some other type of magic or if you're just going to mix types of magic together. Now, one thing I don't suggest is mixing altars because I Cash talks about it too. It's really it's really disrespectful to uh, the gods. It's like it's like if somebody like just moved into your home, like you like your landlord forced somebody to move into your home with you. That's it's like really rude like that. It's just like, I didn't even, I didn't invite them. They weren't allowed to come. They just moved in. You just decided that they were going to come in and share everything that's mine. And I'd like to think that's how they sometimes feel. Now, I like to think that that's how they sometimes feel. But um, I was taking notes over my books today and I was reviewing stuff. And I'm trying to get ready for class, uh, classes, for workshops and teaching people. And people want to know this and that. And I was reviewing my book, my, I was reviewing my books, I'm sorry I can't talk today. I was reviewing my books and I was taking notes and taking notes and I came across the section talking about the creator God, the, um, one of the creator gods of Anid and Anid is the nine deities most worshipped uh, in the pantheon, consists of Isis, Jed, you know, we'll talk about those guys too, Isis, Jed, Osiris, Osiris, Horus, um, Newt, Sekhmet, Tefnut, Ra, Atum, and Hathor, and Nefertiti, And I think I'm missing one, but we'll talk about those guys later. Um, but what the uh, book said to me, what the book said, and what I took note in, it was what, is that in the creation of man, Ra cried tears of joy. But in Ptah's creating man, there was no emotion to it, which means that the gods, the god cried tears of joy, meaning that he made us with joy in his heart. But the tears are also uh, representative of his blindness, meaning that we can't truly understand or see what the gods see. Um, this is a very deep concept. You would really have to read through the story and I might do a, I might do a part two to this video just so I could talk about that but basically the symbolism in that is that we are not to understand what the deity is to understand as he is creator of all and we are not you get what I'm saying you know like you know we're not supposed to be looking but you know we want to we're like we're not we don't understand but we want to understand but we shouldn't understand because we didn't create it you know I don't know I guess that makes sense to me. I guess that wouldn't make sense to everybody, though. Um, we will talk. And um, I guess this is just sort of the end of the video. Um, it was sort of rambly and didn't really have a point. But you, I hope you guys see what I'm saying with spell books. This one, Egyptian magic. This one, any other type of magic. Just It's not big enough. Because the utterances are pages long. Like pages and pages of words like an invocation could be three paragraphs and that's just the first half of the invocation you still have to do the reply and the um and then there's the close which it could be also and both of those could each be three paragraphs which means you took you've taken up either two whole pages just writing one utterance or just copying one utterance and an egyptian spell work it's it's okay to use old spells like the um, utterances and the coffin text just as long as you understand what the coffin texts do some of them are for shape shifting and um some of them speak of myth and egyptians used all of the utterances whether they were stories or actual spells to um in magic because they believed that they all had the same ability to uh grant power by you by reading them by using the words so, um, that's all for this video. It was sort of rambly, sort of long. I hope it taught something, and, uh, bye!